In this segment, I will discuss the most basic concept of sales, features and benefits. Before we begin, if you have not done so already, please download the documents that go with this segment. While features and benefits may sound like a very simple concept that all sales consultants should know, in my experience there is still some confusion about these two words. In this segment, we will discuss what each word means and how you should use each when selling. In order to be successful in sales, you need to have a deep understanding of not only what each word means, but also how to use those things that are represented by each word. Let's first start with a couple of definitions. A feature is what something is. You are probably most familiar with those features that are a part of the vehicles you sell. For example, you probably discuss things like side airbags or stability control with your customers. These are features of the vehicle. You may also discuss other features like the anti-lock braking system or crash test rating or the performance and handling of the vehicle. These are all features. In your current sales presentation, you most likely are telling your customers all of the features that are available on the vehicle that you are trying to sell to them. You tell them these features hoping one of them will be a hot button for the customer and they will decide to buy your vehicle because of it. Some of you probably feel that this is how you add value to your sales presentation. With small vehicles or hybrids you discuss the great gas mileage. With larger SUVs you discuss the amount of cargo space. These are both features of the vehicle you are trying to sell. The problem is that you are attempting to sell this vehicle by selling your customer on its features. You should not be selling features. Selling features does not add value. What you should be selling is benefits. If you sell benefits, you will be adding value. A benefit is what that feature does for the customer. So, just to repeat, a feature is what something is, a benefit is what it does for that customer. Notice I said that customer, not a customer. Benefits are specific to your customer. For example, ABS is just a feature. The benefit is that it will help keep the customer safer in the event that they have to slam on the brakes to avoid an object. Good gas mileage is just a feature. The fact that you will save money with that vehicle because of the better fuel economy is the benefit. Value is made when you sell benefits, not features. However, the benefit has to be something that your customer feels is important. Everything you do is about features and benefits. You all know what the features are of the vehicles you sell. If you do not know, then go ahead and read all the literature and watch the training tapes that your vehicle manufacturer supplies your dealership with. Once you know all the features, your job is to get to know your customer so that you can show them what that feature does for them, hence the benefit. If someone at your dealership asks you what the benefits are of a particular feature, your answer should be, it depends on the customer. Yes, you can have an idea of what a benefit would be. For instance, a passenger side airbag is there to protect the passenger and hence promote safety, which is a benefit of that feature. However, if your customer tells you no one will ever sit in the passenger side of the vehicle, then this is not a benefit to them. If on the other hand, you told the customer that the airbag reduces his insurance cost, then it may be a benefit to that customer. The key to selling benefits is knowing your customer. Keep in mind, as I mentioned earlier, everything you do is features and benefits. When you met your significant other, you were just a feature to him or her. You had to show them the benefits to dating you. Everything is features and benefits, including your sales process. When I say your sales process is also part of the features and benefits equation, what do I mean? Well, even though you know your vehicles well enough to be able to discuss the possible benefits of each feature, it is important to also discuss with your customer the benefits of your sales process. Before I tell you what I mean, let's revisit my analogy from the Building Value video. In that video, I asked you to think of a very nice restaurant in your town, perhaps a restaurant that you may go to for a special occasion. I then asked you to think of what adds value for you at this restaurant you probably think first about the great food quality. While this is important, there are other things that also come to mind. For instance, the great service this restaurant provides. Perhaps they fold your napkin when you get up. 
Some of these restaurants, when you make your reservation, will ask what type of and location of table you would like to sit at. The waiter will explain in detail any dish you want more information on or exactly what the specials consist of. This attention to detail is why you are willing to spend possibly $20 for a hamburger at these nice restaurants. However, if I took that exact same hamburger and put it on the McDonald's menu, you would not spend $20 for it. Why? Because the value you receive from this nice restaurant goes beyond its product or food to the incredible process that the restaurant is able to execute so exceptionally. You add value to your sales process when you are able to show the customer the benefit in that process. Every part of the sales process is just a feature to your customer. You can add value to your process when you show that customer the benefit of that process. For example, do you think a vehicle demonstration or test drive is a feature or a benefit? Many of you probably think it is a benefit. It may be a benefit to you because you think it will help you sell a car at a higher gross profit. However, we are looking at things from the customer's perspective. To them, a demo ride is just a feature. You need to explain to them what the benefit is. Many of you, when the time comes to take a customer on a demo ride, say to the customer, Mr. Jones, follow me. Why did you do that? Perhaps it is because you wanted to avoid an objection. Well, I have news for you. If your customer has an objection, you will hear about it. Maybe not now, but at some point. By doing the process this way, all you do is prolong the time until the customer tells you their objection. I think you should hear objections as soon as possible so that you can deal with them accordingly. And we talk about this at great length in the Resolving Customer Objections video. The better process is to tell the customer what you would like to do next. Tell them the benefit to them and then ask their permission to go on. Here's the example. Mr. Jones, I would like to take you on a test drive in order to show you the performance of this vehicle because you mentioned to me that great handling and performance is important to you. How does that sound? Notice, I told the customer the next step in the process, why it benefited them, and then I asked for permission to continue. Mr. Jones, I would like to take you on a test drive in order to whatever. Is that okay with you? This is the process you should be using to explain the benefits of your process. If the customer had said no, I then have an objection that I can handle right then and there. However, if he says yes, then I continue to work through the sales process. All the while, I am building value in the process because I am not just taking his order or pulling him through this process. McDonald's does that, and we won't spend $20 for a hamburger at McDonald's. However, we will spend $20 for that hamburger at a restaurant that has built value into their process by showing me the benefits of each step. If you want to make more gross profit, you must build value into your process as well as into your vehicles. Describing the feature, either of the vehicle or the next step in the process, and then telling the customer the benefit to them of that feature builds value in your process and therefore increases your gross profit and CSI. Let's take a look at a role play of this. Mike, now that you've had a chance to look at the GS, what I'd like to do is take out a demonstration drive. Now you mentioned the fact that earlier that you, your back's been bothering you and I want to be able to show you how comfortable the seating is in the GS. So if it's all right with you, can we go on a test drive? That'd be great. Great, let's go. In this role play, you saw me tell the customer what the next step in the process was and why it was a benefit to the customer. I told the customer the benefit was to show him the comfortable seating. Why? Because he had mentioned earlier that he had a bad back. In order to know that he had a bad back, I would have had to make sure I was listening and asking questions. The only way you can sell benefits instead of features is by getting to know your customers. Many of you sell features instead of benefits because you have not asked questions or listened to your customer to find out what is important to them. If you do not know what your customer's likes and dislikes are, you will be forced to either sell them the features or list all the benefits of a particular feature. When you regurgitate all the possible benefits of a particular feature, you are showing the customer that you do not care about them. All you care about is making a sale. You may actually make the sale. However, you will not be adding any value. 
When you don't add value, you do not make as much gross profit or have as high customer satisfaction scores. You also do not increase the customer's trust in you. Also, if you do not get to know what is important to your customer, you cannot possibly show them the benefits of your process. Therefore, you are forced to revert to what I call smoke and mirrors to get them to move through the process. You use a trick or some other means to pull them through your process. Telling your customer to follow you while you walk out onto the lot or saying to the customer, I have a great idea, while all you are really doing is going to get your manager to close the deal, these things do not add value to your process. Instead, they add anxiety. When anxiety goes up, trust and gross go down. You must get to know your customer. When do you get to know your customer? This process starts the moment you speak to them for the first time, be it on the phone or in person. When you are with them, you will use the skills and tools from the questioning skills video and the listening techniques video, as well as the gathering information video to determine what is most important to them. You should always be thinking about how you are going to show them the benefit of something as you are talking to them. This way you can make a note when they say something like, my back hurts. You will know that you can use this information later on. If you skip steps in the beginning of the sales process, you will not be able to sell them on the benefits and will be left talking to them about the features. I want to discuss another area where you can use feature and benefit selling techniques. When you need to turn your customer over to your F&I or business manager, you should also be using feature and benefit selling techniques. For example, when the time comes to introduce your customer to the F&I department, you should say something like this. Mike, the next step is for you to meet with our business manager, Jim. Jim will help you review your paperwork with you to make sure it matches everything we agreed on. He will also take care of all the motor vehicle paperwork for you, so you don't have to go and spend a day at the DMV office. He is also the person responsible for getting your application approved from our lender in a timely manner. I have had customers who decide to use their own bank and regret it after they find out how long it will take the bank to not only approve their loan, but also to fund it. Jim does all of this for you. Finally, Jim will go over some products that you may be interested in that can protect your investment. You mentioned that you would most likely be keeping this vehicle for up to 75,000 miles. So one item I know he will mention is an extended service contract to cover your investment after the factory warranty. So how does this sound? Now notice that when I told the customer about my business manager, I did not just list features. I told the customer what the benefit would be to them. I could do this because I had asked the customer questions earlier in the sales process to know what was important to them. I then used this information to explain to them the benefits of our F&I department. Everything you do is about features and benefits, even turn over to the F&I department. Explaining what a feature is to a customer and how that feature benefits them is not only good for you, but also good for your customer. Selling benefits is a more customer-centered way to sell cars. I mentioned earlier that this will mean more sales at a higher gross profit with increased customer satisfaction for you. It also will be a more pleasant experience for your customer as well, just as going to a nice restaurant is a better experience than going to McDonald's.